Hey everyone, this is the third part of our Payload Basic setup series. Today we will be talking about adjusting our environment variables, adjusting our payload and our Webpack config. First of all, in addition to the already existing two environment variables, we're going to add three more. After that, we're going to give our project a dynamic port and a dynamic server URL. We'll also disable GraphQL since we will not be using it. And I'm also going to show you how you can adjust the config of the users collection to support auth from a separate frontend. Last but not least, we will be talking about handling server only modules, like for example, the FS module, which only works in node environments and not in the frontend. All right, let's get started. So the last time we were successfully able to start up a development server using npm run dev. Now this will start our development server on localhost 3000. This is fine, but it's currently hard coded in a code which we want to change. So let's start by adjusting our environment variables. What we are going to add is actually three more environment variables. The first one is called payload, public, external, server, URL. By the way, you can name them however you want, um, but I think that's the way it makes sense. I'm going to explain them in a second. So for now, we're going to set this to HTTP localhost 4000. By the way, I'm sorry for the terrible typing, but it's very unusual for me to type and speak at the same time. Now, moving on, we're going to define a port variable, which we're going to set to 4000. And it's important that this port equals the port that we specify here. The third thing is called payload env, which we're going to set to development. All right. Um, let's talk about the first environment variable, which is called payload public external server URL. This environment variable basically replaces the server URL attribute, which is currently hard coded in the payload config. So we're going to say process.env.payload.public.external.server URL. Now, the reason why I've put payload public in front of this is so that the admin panel in payload can actually access this environment variable. Um, in payload, the environment variables actually work pretty similar to Next.js, if you're familiar with that. So in Next.js, if you want the front end to receive an environment variable, you have to add next public. And in this case, we have to add payload public. I've just added payload public because this is an information that can be very handy in the front end as well. And it's not relevant for any security concerns. So we can just pass it to the front end. Now, the second environment variable called port is basically a replacement for the static port that we have set in server TS. Okay, so in server TS, we're going to say process.env.port. Now, we could technically also name it payload public port. The reason why I've named it port is that in production, if we would deploy it on railway, railway actually sets this port variable automatically. So we will not set the port variable when it comes to deploying our app. And that will basically make it work out of the box, but more on that later. The third environment variable is called payload env. And this one is very, you can think of it just as node env. Okay, so we basically have three modes, development, testing, and production here. Um, the reason why I've split the two, node, and, node env and payload env, is because sometimes you have a node env of production while you still have a payload env of development. Okay, um, the payload env variable, I will explain it to you later how we are using it. Um, it's basically to adjust a few mechanisms in our project 
that should behave differently um, depending on whether we are currently testing a project or if we are actually running it in production. Moving on, we've already specified a dynamic server URL and port. The next thing that we're going to do is disable GraphQL. I've actually already done this. Um, so the only thing that you have to do is in the GraphQL attributes in the payload config, you just have to delete everything and just add one attribute called disable true. And that will disable GraphQL entirely. Now, if you got started with the blank default template, you will likely have one collection called users and one collection called example. Uh, I've already gone ahead and deleted the example collection so we can just focus on the users collection, which is basically our main collection that has authentication enabled and that is also set as the primary collection that can log into the admin panel. If you're wondering why this is JavaScript, um, I've already gone ahead and basically converted it into JavaScript. It's not a big deal. If you want to use JavaScript, you just have to rename the .ts files to .js, remove the types, and that's basically it. You can still create your collections in JavaScript. The two of those files, payload config and server ts, have to remain in, in TypeScript, which makes sense. But if you don't want to get bothered by any TypeScript notifications or, or errors, you can just add a line called at TS node check at the top of both files, which will basically get rid of any TypeScript related warnings or errors. Now, if we want to use such a collection from a separate front end, um, this is generally possible, but there are a few things that you might want to watch out for. As you can see, we've enabled authentication with this collection. However, if we want to use it with a separate front end, it makes sense to adjust the cookie configuration. So what I'm going to do is to replace the auth true attribute with an object that contains a cookie configuration. So we're going to say cookies, and we're going to set two settings. The first one is secure, which we're going to set to process.env.env does not equal development. And the second one, we're going to set it to same, uh, the second, sorry, the second setting is same site. And we're going to set it to process.env.payloadenv equals testing. And if it equals testing, we're going to set it to none. Otherwise, we're going to set it to locks. What this does is it uses our created payload environment, environment variable to determine if we are currently in development, in testing, or in production mode. Now, if we are in development mode, means on our local machine, we actually have to disable the secure attribute because otherwise no cookies will be set if we don't have HTTPS enabled, which we don't have if we're working on our local host. And then the same side attribute, if we're in our testing environment, we likely have two automatically generated URLs for the backend and the frontend. So for example, if we're using Railway, we get an automatic automatically generated domain like our app dot up dot railway dot app and our front end might live on whatever the name is dot vercel dot app which are two separate domains so we have to disable the same side attribute now if we're not in testing but in production we will likely be using the same domain like app dot domain dot com and backend dot domain dot com in this case, we should not disable the same site attribute to make our site more secure. If you want to support authentication from a separate front end, there's actually another thing that you have to adjust. Initially, I wasn't planning to include this in the video, but watching it before uploading, it just makes sense to add it here, okay? So what we're going to do is actually add a fourth environment variable called whitelist 
origins. Okay, so you might guess it's related to course. Okay, so what we're going to add here is a list of all front ends that we might call the back end from. So in this case, I'm always using localhost 3000 for the front end or 3001 and localhost 4000 for the back end. So in this case, we want to whitelist this origin localhost 3000 um, for course and CSRF. The way we do that in payload is we go into the payload config and we actually add two attributes. The first one is course, which will set to process dot env dot whitelist origins. And since we can specify more than one origin and we can also specify none, uh, we're going to say, okay, if those exist, we're going to return the whitelist origins, but split by a comma so that we're going to actually return an array. And if they don't exist, we're just going to return an empty array. Now, we just have to add a very similar attribute, which is not called course, but CR, sorry, CSRF, okay, which stands for cross-site request forgery. Now, those are basically the only two things that you have to add to make sure that you don't get any course errors if you call the backend from your front end. Apart from that, I would like to implement two smaller changes in our package.json file. The first one is to replace the npm run serve command with the npm run start command. This doesn't have any specific reason other than it that it makes the railway deployment a lot easier because that's another thing railway automatically runs npm run build and npm run start afterwards. The second thing that I would like to extend is the copy files script. So as you can see, copy files is involved in the build process. And here you have a lot of file types that it basically includes in the, in the build. And here I would like to add a few more types, for example, our EJS template files or park template files, but also JSON files. If you don't include them here, they are not going to be included in the build, which might cause errors. So adjust this to whatever files you might want to have in your build as well. Last but not least, we're now going to adjust our Webpack config to be able to handle server only modules. For that, we're going back into our payload config file and in the admin attribute, we're going to add webpack. Now I'm going to paste in a configuration function that you will also find in the, in the description down below. Basically is a error function that takes in a config arguments and first of all, returns it. The thing that we are going to adjust is the resolve dot alias property. Now this is fairly straightforward. So the way that we tell Webpack to not include a library into its bundle is to basically link it to an empty function. For that, we're going to create a new folder called mocks in our source folder. And in this mocks folder, we're going to create a new file called empty function.js. And in this file, the only thing that we will add is one line which says export default and then an empty arrow function. Now, what we will have to do in the payload config is to import the path of this mock module basically. And I'm doing that by calling path.resolve, the directory name, the directory name mocks and empty function.js. And as you can see, we're using this mock module path to basically remap the FS module, which is a server only module to an empty function that will basically tell Webpack to not bundle anything in the bundle for the front end. Because otherwise, if you try to bundle the FS module into the front end, that will cause errors because the FS module 
will not work in a browser but only in a node environment. Apart from that, we are done for today. In the next video, we are going to add support for file uploads using an S3 bucket that we are also going to set up. And we will be going through a first initialization of our payload project, creating a first user, and just going through the admin UI a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to just ask them in the comments below. And apart from that, take care.